Hi guys, welcome to Claire's Day. Hi, my babies. How you doing? My name is Claire. I like to spell it with a K for reasons best known to me. I'm not going to get into that right now. You're welcome to my deck where I ask my guests the most random hypothetical questions. Never have I ever questions. Would you rather questions? Basically with the intent to get to know more about my guests more than any search engine cares to tell me. Now, I'm sure you see this mic in front of me. Yeah, it's not a podcast. It's not just exciting. So you're basically stuck with me on your screens and in your ears. It's more annoying. I love it. Now, today I'm hanging with an exceptional guest. She's an international, you know, it's an international, international DJ. She's amazing at what she does. She's gorgeous. And she's based in the UK and she just got back. IJGB, baby. When I come back, I'm going to introduce my guest to you. But if you can guess, please hit me up. Grab a popcorn and a drink and I will be right back. Hi guys, welcome to Claire's Deck. Hi. Welcome back to my deck. Were you able to guess who I have on? I'm hanging with the one, the only, drum roll please, drum roll please, drum roll please, thank you, Mercedes Benson. <laughs> How you feeling, girl? <laughs> I've lost my voice. So what? that that shows you that I've just got back. I just got back. I'm Italawa. on the streets. I'm living my best life and my voice is finished because you guys want to outclub me here. <laughs> That's what it really is. In Lagos. It's you been think you mad. Can club? It's been mad. Come here December, babe. 100%. Come here December. <laughs> you will understand. Do you know it's so terrible for people living in Lagos? Like I'm suffering. I've literally been seeing all the TikToks of people like yeah. who live in Lagos just complaining about the traffic, how they can't get into the clubs anymore. They can't book reservations. They can't braid hair. I'm sorry. Girl, the list is ongoing. <laughs> Let's never talk about the cab hairs. Like, what is with it? Like, I can't I be broken piece. I know, that's true, actually. The, the what's it called? The um, surcharges have been crazy. What? It's literally gone from, like, maybe 1K, 2K to, like, 6K. It's mad. You see, I'm just glad that she's an IGGB that understands. So I, I don't, get it. I don't I get, get it. to, like, you know, push it. So, nah, yeah, you're I get welcome. it. <laughs> I hope you've been enjoying all the parties, all the outsideness. It's been really fun. Like, yeah, I think it's been, I've been coming back now intentionally for the past three years. Mm. Um, and it's just keeping, it gets better and better. Mm. And I just love, this is home. So I love yeah. being home now. So, yeah. I love that. <laughs> so on my deck, I ask hypothetical questions. A okay. lot of times, it might not really make sense to your current situation, but but there's a purpose for it. Okay. So let's get into it, right? Let's get straight into it. Real quick, if you were not a DJ, what would you be on right now? What would I be if I wasn't a DJ? Right now. Um, if I wasn't a DJ, I probably would have stayed in the career that I was in before, which was marketing. Mm. Um, so I've been a marketing manager for like brands like Adidas and Google. So I would have just, yeah, name drop. <laughs> you know, I just had to drop that, that in. <laughs> um, so I probably would have just stayed in like the corporate side of things okay. and been behind the scenes. But yeah. like, why did you leave? Was it because of passion or you didn't like the corporate side? No, it really wasn't that. I got fired from <laughs> one of my jobs. Like, I'm going to keep it all the way 100. Um, not in the companies that I named, um, but I, I remember moving to one company in particular. And I was literally there for six weeks. A madness happened. A girl did not like me. And yeah, she fired me before my probation ended. And at the time, I just started learning how to DJ as a hobby. Mm. And so I guess being fired just pushed me to explore this hobby even more. Um, my social media following had built up by that time. And I was already like throwing parties myself. I just wasn't mm. DJing at mm. them. Okay. So I thought, you know what, let me just go for it and see. And so, yeah, I guess... Getting fired pushed me into my oh, purpose. Nice. Um, and so that's why I'm here now. Get fired today. Get fired today, today. guys. If you don't like your job, just leave. Just leave. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Maybe like a hobby might make you a Mercedes. <laughs> exactly. Benson. Bad advice, but good advice. I mean, at the same time, right? <laughs> yeah. All right. If you could go back in time and hands down win any arguments you've ever been in, which would you win and why? Like, 
it would be the arguments that I have with my mum on a daily, bro. <laughs> like, mom, I swear. This woman. I swear. Um, I think I would go back to my secondary school days. So... Um, in the UK, yeah. before we go to university, we do these exams called A levels. Yeah. Okay. Um, and so I wanted to do performing arts for my one of my A levels, but my mum forced me to drop that to do maths. And what? I, bruh, and I wish I stuck at, out at that argument oh. because I hate maths and I didn't do well in that bloody <laughs> exam anyways and I remember b- being so sad because everyone in the performing arts group were able to go to New York oh, wow. and experience like the theatre shows and stuff and I just you remember see, being so man. can you imagine I remember being so upset and I think you know a word of advice sometimes your parents just won't get it yeah um so if you have the opportunity to stand your ground do it actually because i would have loved to have been on that trip mm-hmm. and yeah I like my maths. brother would have said the same thing as well like i remember when my brother was telling my dad he wanted to play football seriously and my father was like no child of mine he's playing football what <laughs> what do you mean fast forward to right now my dad started to see like the earnings of football i was like ah on your car. What do you mean uh, when I don't want? I was like, <laughs> you exactly. See? Yeah. Our parents, especially like the creative and the entertainment space, like a lot of parents don't get it. Yeah, they don't they get don't it. They don't see that there is money mm-hmm. out there to be made. So yeah, please win that argument, man. Win that don't argument lose. today. <laughs> Try your hardest. Literally. So you look dashing, by the Thank way. You. you seem like a girl that just has a style and sticks to it. Yeah. I love it. Absolutely. Um, for me, it's just about comfort. So mm. um, I feel like I'm a hybrid be- between being like a tomboy and a girly girl. Just so, wear sneakers with a long yeah, dress. Yeah, I'll guys. wear my sneakers with my dress or I wear really baggy pants with like heels. Mm. I just I just really believe in being comfort, but like me. pretty, you know? Me too. So that's the vibe. You know, yesterday, so I hosted this event yesterday and they were just like, oh my God, comf queen. Because I just kept on wearing like comfortable outfits. On stage, because I'm not doing any of that glamorous. It's too much it's, sometimes. Who's going to wear that much waist trainer? Yeah. <laughs> so what? I have a big belly. Like, <laughs> Take me as I am. <laughs> Take me as I am, babe. I love so it. So now, speaking of fashion rides, if you were a fashion icon and whatever you wear would become a fashion trend, what fashion trend would you start? <laughs> Snickers on long dresses. I'm, I'm a vote for that. Do you know, funnily enough, actually, okay, this was a trend that I used to wear when I was younger and I feel like it's coming back a little bit. But you know when, like, we used to wear, like, like the pedal pusher leggings with, like, a mini skirt? Mm. Did you ever, do you remember that one? Mm. Okay, so we wear, like, a mini frilly skirt over, yeah, like, leggings. trousers or leggings. Oh, yeah, I did that, I did that. So I feel like I would want to bring that back because I love wearing skirts, but I just don't always want my legs to be exposed. Mm. And there was a way that we did it during that Spice it Girl like era. So it's like, steezy. can we bring it back? Can we bring that 2000s vibe back? I'm with that. I want to do that one. 2000 babies. Yes. Now we're still on the fashion talk, yeah. right? As that same fashion icon, what fashion trend would you ban and even add jail terms of? Oh my God, that's a good question. Like, you, you, j- jail for you. Jail for you too, man. Oh. You don't want to get canceled? Do you know what it is? I Because anything can be rocked and made to look like a vibe. Yeah, but like, you know, fashion is subjective. This is it. Um, I don't even know. It's jail time. Like, jail for you. For me, I think it's be... Go on, what's yours? Sneakers on suits. I don't know. Fairs. I'll send you to jail. I'm sorry. That means you'll send me to jail, bro, because I've done that jail so many times. Jail for you times. too, girl. That's the thing. Like, I feel like I, I am that girl that will get sent to jail. Maybe... Fairs, that's t- why you can't think of anything. But maybe, actually, recently I've been seeing people wear, like, ties. Like, girlies wearing ties with, like, their shirts. Mm. I personally... Just don't get it. I it, haven't even seen that. I don't get yeah, it. Yeah, like trust me, go on TikTok. Like there's a few girlies that just are wearing like ties with their mm. shirts and or like kind of hanging it down. It just reminds me of school. Yeah. I'm really not trying to go back, go back there. To school, man. Like, so like girls, leave the ties mm-hmm. for the man them. Like <laughs> we don't need to be doing it on a day to day. So thank you. Jail for you. Jail for you guys. <laughs> and jail for her too, because she be wears stickers. <laughs> 
<laughs> All right. So if you could go back to any age, right, for a month, what age would you choose and why? I don't say 16. No, I think I would be like 21 again. No, what were you doing at 21? Uh, I don't know. Outside. But I think, oh no, 21, I went to Miami. Yeah, so as soon as I was 21, we went to my, we did the Miami girls trip. Okay, shaking your bum on it, yeah. No, but that's the thing. We were too brokey to be doing all of those things again. So if I could go back to being 21, my awareness mm. on just life would be a little bit different. I would be a bit bolder. Like, if there was a guy that I liked, I would have just gone up to, to them yeah. and just been like, hey, I feel like at 21, I was really shy and I was always scared about, the consequences for mm. everything. I don't think I, I think the 21 year olds now, they're really like living their best life, yeah. you know? Um, good, bad, whatever. They're just bolder. They're just, so it's like, if I'm going to be 21 again and I'm going to go to Miami, like I'm going to have fun. Like, right? You know, that makes in sense. a good way. But PG vibes. PG fun. <laughs> PG for fun. For Thank Christ. You. Yes. <laughs> uh, but if I could go back to any age, I think I would. Okay, if I could go back to any age, I think I would go back to when I was 13 and buy Bitcoin. <gasps> That's a... You see, not... You see... Evil girls. Look at you. Smart. Instead of you, instead of me to be thinking about money and... Can I change that, actually? Because here I'm saying, go to Miami and shake your ass on a yacht and you're talking about... Bit, bruh, Cash. do you know what? I'm changing my, I'm changing my answer. You're going to steal my true. answer now. If I was... If I could be any age again, guys, I would be... Mm. When did we start using the internet? Did you know, I would be like 12. Mm. And you know what they used to do? They would like buy domains. Mm. Oh my God, I would Listen, buy like Google. I would buy crazy domains. I would I would have been like www.drake.com. Oh my God. www.askmeout.com. <laughs> www. The email w, like, is coming out. Because e now... Those domains will be selling for so much because now you can't even get domains like that. Anymore. The dot coms, you can't get it like, like that. It's so hard. So I would have done that. Mm. Evil girls. Evil girl. Yeah, we, we, we rock, we, babe. We, we gotta, we gotta think business, man. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go on a quick break. When I come back, we're gonna talk some more business, but the music business as well. And also, she's going to be answering some never have I ever questions, and she has to be honest. All right, so we'll be right back. Hi guys, welcome to Claire's Deck. Mercedes Benz is still in the building with me, Claire with a K. And we're having a swell time. Yo, this is like very bad joke that came off my head when I saw your name. So how many African aunties have called you Mercedes Benz? Uh, all of them. They don't even say Mercedes. So, uh, it's, it's Mercedes. But they'll be like, Mercedes. <laughs> that's, that's how. I'll be like, oh. Um, they'll be like, oh, what's your name? Mercedes. Oh, Mercedes. Mercedes. I'm like, Mercedes, yeah. baby. Yeah. Whatever and then you your said. name is now Mercedes Benson. Like, Mercedes Benz. I know. My, my parents were having fun. Yeah. Like, <laughs> clearly. Because I don't know. But <laughs> we're here. <laughs> here we are. <laughs> Gotta stick with it. Exactly. Never have I ever. I'm gonna get right into it. So if you have, you have to show me that you have. If you have not, then you just have to flip it over. But you have to give me a story time. Because <clears throat> I'm not gonna let that go. Okay. I can just say what you just said. Never have I ever gone through someone's phone and did you find what you were looking for? Right? I mean, uh -huh. I, I have chat and I found what I was looking for. So did you? I did. Do. Mm -hmm. do you know what? I feel like I'm too anxious to look. Because mm. when I find it, it's gonna it's gonna be mad, and and also when you go through the phone, it's almost like your eyes will be looking for, for the negative. For something, literally, like I was searching for the negative. Yeah, like, I feel like it's better for me to just. I you see, my God reveals things to me in my dreams. You, oh my God, girl! Yes, I don't need to go through any phone. It will be in my dream, and it just always comes out. I thought, like, are yeah. you literally saying you do see dreams of? No, hundred percent, or it just always comes out. Right? Like, I just... By themselves. You I don't, by itself. I don't even need to look for it. It will always come out. That's so crazy. So, so that means it has tested, approved, and trusted. Yes. 
And for me, I, I snooped though. I, snooped. I searched for my name in particular, K L A I R E. I was like, oh damn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like shit. Like I did that. Wow. Uh, okay. Yeah. I guess we're done. <laughs> oh my god. But yeah, I found what I was looking for. Never have I ever gotten an ugly tattoo that I regret. I don't have any tattoos. Oh wow. I don't like pain. Oh wow. Ta- why are we piercing ink in our skin? For what? <laughs> For the steez. Oh God, no! Do you know what it is? I just don't like pain. I haven't done it piercings, mm. and I haven't. I feel like when I should have done that was in the rebellious stages mm-hmm. of like between sixteen to twenty-five. Mm. I feel like now I don't Wait, even. I don't even. You're not sixteen to twenty-five no, right now. No, you're not seventeen years old. I'm your mommy. I'm a big girl. <laughs> I'm your mommy. Oh. Yeah, I'm your mommy, okay? <laughs> That's insane. Yeah. Oh, great jeans. Can I tap from your fountain of your youth, please? Of course. Thank you. I'll, I'll give you the plug. All right, right after. <laughs> Pro bono. Thank you. <laughs> oh, wow. But this tattoo is my first and only right now. When I got it, it was like, what, three weeks ago? Did you? <laughs> what made you get it? Just woke up. Not, so to be fair, yeah, I've always wanted a tattoo, but I just don't like pain, just like you. Even At least person, it's the cross. Hallelujah. Yeah. Just in case I see no demon. Bang. <laughs> Bang. Bang. I love cast. that. So I was in Uganda like on this random day and... Well, you did it in Uganda. Yes, I know, right? I did it in Uganda. And my piercing as well. The piercing was even sicker because they, they pierced it with what they pierced the nose. Okay. Is it what that gun? It the wasn't gun the gun. Thing. Like, so I've never gotten a piercing before, so I didn't even know it was wrong. Okay. But apparently you're supposed to use the gun for the ear and the guy used the, the, the long needle for my ear and stabbed the <sighs> hail out of it and then I screamed and I didn't press the second one because there's no way I'm going to do that but why but you see this tattoo hard as hell and then when I woke up in the morning I was like I'm not spinning me on but (laughs) this was good I'm not on it I'm (laughs) not look at her she's like oh my god the pain no way the horror (laughs) the stress I love it okay never have I ever lied about liking a gift someone gave me ah oh (laughs) I have expensive taste, man. Oh, uh, oh, this bottle of gin. Chocolate. Oh, oh thank you so much. Um, yeah, no, 100%. I've done it um, before. I remember there was one gift. It was one of the, you know, those like Amazon gift home cards. things where they, you have to speak to it and it tells you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just not really a gadget girl. Oh, like, okay. get me a bag. <laughs> get me, you like, know. So what, you got me a robot? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't want to talk to anything robotic or technical. Like, yeah, I need what? tangible things that will make me like a feel good. Exactly. Or Kelly, mm-hmm. you know. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> Appreciate it. Hence, never have I ever prank called someone. When I was younger. I did this last year. Uh, <laughs> and now, are you five? Yes. What? Have you seen me? I'm a toddler. What? Are you joking? But it was such a crazy experience. Tell me about yours, because I'm not interviewing myself. No, I just feel, I think we did it like when we were in secondary school and you could like hide your caller ID. Yeah. So when we have the girly sleepovers, we'll just like call the guys call that we like. Oh, okay. Yeah, that, that was it. So so the flip side of what I did with my friends was it was some random like girls staycation at a hotel. We were in the pool and we we're like just vibing. So we we're like, yeah, let's work around and plan, plan call people. We've not done this in years because last time we did it, we were yeah. like teens. I was like, ah, okay, I'm always down. I'm that person that's always down. That's the problem. <laughs> You're so, the daredevil. Yeah. I was like, yeah, let's do it. So do you know what we decided to do? What? Prank call each other's exes. It was a bad idea because my friend gave me her ex's number. This was, like we did a swap chat. Long story short, her ex like kept on calling me two weeks later, fell in love with my voice. I got a riz. Can you fear men? <laughs> <laughs> How are you falling in love over a voice? Do you understand? This is the the other like, problem. He just said there's something about you. I was like, the, the girl was like, So what? he was toasting you from the voice? Yes. Nigga, hey. And you know, crazy thing is that I didn't even show you my face. Imagine if you saw this. Ah, uh, it would be game over. Crazy. Obviously. Crazy. <laughs> crazy. But yeah, it was, it was just a little thing. I feel like because I had the intent of getting that r- yeah, response, yeah, yeah. I kind of led with that. Like, um... <clears throat> So I just kind of landed and um, so, ah, there's something about the way you just talk. Do you know what would have been exciting if where? you guys did it with like current boyfriends? Because then, yo, we can catch out some things. You would 
catch out some things. Oh, not at so angle. I think the next time we do it, let's prank call the actual boyfriend. See if we can catch them out. <laughs> Imagine just waking up in Zaza. If I saw you in Zaza, what? and you'd be like, what? Yeah, uh, yeah I've, I've seen a couple husbands outside. Hmm, no I names. Have to shout. <laughs> <laughs> I have seen a few. A lot. Yeah. Shout out to you, baby. <laughs> All right, real quick before we go on a quick break, and then we talk about your DJ, because she's a fire DJ. She's not just beautiful, she's got brains too. How amazing. Just like me. <laughs> so, never have I ever used a pickup line. Is your father an awkward seller? Because your beauty draws me to you. And Where are you just, getting this know, from? <laughs> the internet. <laughs> I have not. Ever. I don't. I don't chat you know, up men. Oof. No. It's Why would I DM a man first when I'm the catch? Um, I'm the I'm the brand. I can't do that. It's off brand. Yeah, no. Eh. But I feel like I need to come to you for you've got some I've game. Got Riz. That's you've what I'm got saying. Game. Game. Wait, you've got Riz. Mm-hmm. What's that? Riz Daddy. Like so Riz is basically game. Is like it? Steez, you know? I got Riz. I got Riz. Yeah. What is- <laughs> Let's actually do this real quick before we get into your DJ talk. Let's do like a, a UK and Nigerian slang test. Okay, okay. Drop a UK slang. Um, um, you know what? I'll drop a UK slang. You drop a Nigerian slang. How about that? All right, let me go. <laughs> Man them. Meaning men them. Okay. Um, toast. Meaning chatting you up. Mm. Moving to you, meaning toast. Okay. Um, uh, um, um. <laughs> it took meaning. meaning. You know, I don't even know what the meaning is. I, I think it's like, it's either it's really busy. This is what I think. Yeah, let me know. It took is busy or it took. You choke, like I, I choke. <laughs> I have no idea. I just say it. <laughs> it choke, innit? It? Right. Ch- what does it mean? It basically means. Um, I think it depends on the context. Okay, but it's cool. not like it's a lot. It's it's a lot in a good way, or, or it could be a lot in a bad way. Okay, I was close. <laughs> it's busy. It's a lot. It's, it's a lot. It's busy. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> All right, all right. Let's go to a quick break. When I come back, Mercedes is going to give me a little tea on her DJ career and where she is right now. And if she plans on being one of those DJs that give us records, because, girl, I want some. Mm. Be right back. Hi, guys. Welcome to Claire's Day. So, girl, I hope you've been having a swell time so far. I'm loving it. It's I been do. the easiest interview. You're just vibes. Guys, okay, I want to tell you I'm the best. Like, it's, it's not a joke. Stop, <laughs> okay? So, Mercedes, mm-hmm. like I asked just before my last quick break, are you, like, planning on putting out any records anytime soon as a DJ? Because DJ will be just... It's doing that. Um, Consequence has done that. Exclusive. I mean, I'm calling Nigerian DJs. Yeah. But like, what about you? What are you saying? Do you know what? Like, it's something that I've thought about. And I think if I did drop a record, it will kind of push me, especially if it's a good one, it will definitely push me into, like, the global sphere because I'm really mm. trying to be global with this thing. Um, I need to think about it because I want to know what my sound would be. I haven't actually really stepped into a studio to kind of, like, experiment just yet. And mm. also, it's like, I don't know. I, I feel like... As a girl, studio life is so different, it's so right? Different, yeah. Yeah, like, I feel like the guys are, like... I feel like it's a lot different for DJs. Because yeah. Because you don't necessarily have to be in the studio all I the could time. just bring the people together. Yeah, you together. could bring the record together or you could like maybe um AR, mix, master, you know what? That come is up with the beats. You could just make the record your own and then put out like Obi, for instance, I am first song from beginning to end and Obi yeah. didn't produce it, but Obi put the record together. So it's Obi's song. So it's more kind of like creative directing the process. Yeah. That's something that I could do. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Because I feel like I don't want to lie and say, like, I'm a producer because yeah, yeah, I can't produce anything. Yeah. But 
I think what us DJs have is we have a really good Music ear ears. and we have a good understanding of like what the next trend is going to be. Like mm. we can almost see it before it happens. So yeah, I need to consider that for 2024, 100%. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm down for that. That's amazing. Now this DJP, right? How long did it take you to learn it? So I actually got like a crash course in DJing. Um, at the time, there's a really big DJ in London called DJ Neptizzle. And when I started DJing, it was, like I told you, just off the whim. But then once I started using social media to tell people, okay, I'm learning how to DJ, I started DJing at my own parties. I actually got approached by a really big festival um, in the UK. So he then took me from, like, beginner DJ to, like, okay, you're ready to perform in front of people. I think it was about three months. And I would go um, and practice with him, like, twice a week for about mm. three months so yeah I think if you just apply yourself like a couple days a week you could be good I feel good enough in like three to six months that's actually amazing advice that I'm not just asking for the audience I'm asking for myself 100% because this OAP is learning how to DJ you have to I haven't actually said that before have to you anybody. not like I've actually started learning how to DJ I just haven't said it at all that is so, well, or now posted that, a video but now that you've said it it's happening yeah and it it's puts more happen. pressure on me to Absolutely. actually take it seriously no I think we need way more female DJs in the yeah. scene anyways so it's like yeah we have amazing ears for music but people just underrate it we're so good at that honestly so good at that stuff so what would you say your biggest shock was since you came back to Nigeria especially in this dirty December period I think the biggest shock for me is to um, to see how far behind the UK is with music mm. compared to being home. In London, we're still playing and, you know, no shade to the London guys and girls and stuff, but we're still on a shake, sungba. Like, that is... <laughs> That's past <laughs> that time ago. That is honestly, like, what is still hot in the clubs. And, of course, it's a great record, but coming here... And is Shally Poppy. Shally Poppy. Yeah, did I say his name right? Yeah. Um, Zero. I can't say his name. Zeradol. Yeah. Zeradol. 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 I like that song. Yeah, though. That, that, you know that one Pop-pass. song? Yeah. So, oh, like it's and, a gem. And the way we got where, the way we play I'm a piano here in Lagos compared to Crazy. the UK, it's just so different. Like. Here, everything is faster, but the beat, the that drum, man. It just gets you. It gets you. And I think what I love about here is that, you know, we complain about uh, in Ibiza, for example, there's not much of a black presence. There's not much of an Afrobeat presence, but the Ibiza vibe is in Lagos. Mm. Like we can play house music and Afrobeats like, like never before and then it's just gonna be seamless people will have a great time regardless honestly so i think that was the shock just seeing that in the uk we've still got a lot to do to catch up yeah um i think the diaspora conversations are always quite tight-knit but i think with the music we're kind of a bit behind so Yeah. yeah we need to hurry up catch up so do you think like it's something you would tap into when you get back to the UK? This is, I think that's the importance of why these seasons are important. Like, I I know, you know, you're the Lagos babes and the guys, we don't, you don't want us to keep coming back and clogging up the traffic. But they have to stay forever. I know. <laughs> but I feel like we need more of us in the UK to be coming back. Um, not just to, you know, understand the culture a little bit more, but also pull back into it. Yeah. I think if more of us are coming back and forth, we can actually start having real conversations. And real connections And real well. connections. And it can just be like a, a hybrid of vibes. Um, I think there's still way more, you know, DJs from the UK that should be here understanding how it's being done. So when mm. we take it back to the UK, we can not only bring the vibes back, but also get the artists to come. Yeah. It doesn't have to be the biggest artist, you know, it could still be the up and coming and the emerging artists, but let's kind of, you know, make those conversations greater for everyone. Mm. Okay, okay. Yeah. Mercedes with the T, with the vibes, Just with the talent, with the face, <laughs> with Everything of the steez and the riz. And, and the riz. And the riz. And the riz. <laughs> Does it not chuck? It choke. Did it not chuck? It choke. It was man. a small time <laughs> hanging with you today, babes. 
what, what's your social media just in case I want to check you out absolutely so I am literally the most consistent Virgo ever because it's at Mercedes F Benson on everything. everywhere oh my god absolutely everything so at Mercedes F Benson um Snapchat Twitter Actually, I don't really use Twitter like that but yeah TikTok. Snapchat TikTok um Instagram LinkedIn, mm-hmm. if you want to talk business. Um, so yeah, that's me. I like that. I'm just like her, but I'm not Virgo, right? I'm K-L-A-I-R-E-O-N-Y-E-K-A. Claire Onyeka everywhere. Snapchat, TikTok, even to go. I'm kidding. I don't need to go. That's <laughs> a lie. <laughs> and we are at This Is Pop Central on Instagram. I'm so glad to be in your ears and on your TV. Isn't that just amazing? I'll be talking to you on Saturday. Thank you for always pulling through my baby. I'll talk to you later. Bye.